Um, it's going to be a long night. It's going to be brutal. Don't give me that, sir. Chispa. You know, I need some caffeine in my system. Oh. Oh, wait a second. Hello, folks. Welcome again to the Hoboken's Girlfriend Wrestling Show. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. I'm ingesting massive quantities of caffeine. And I tell you what, that red wine is not helping. Because, well, actually now, there's about an hour and 45 minutes until Wrestle Kingdom. Because, well, at least it was Friday night here. So here's my predictions. Oh, wow, that's it? Okay. So, before Wrestle Kingdom, I have a triple threat show to, to give you. Let's start with some SmackDown first. Well, I'm all hyped up on caffeine. And I have the caffeine flowing through my body. Wow, tomorrow at 7 a.m. Am I crashing or what? But so, SmackDown starts off uh, with Miz and Daniel Bryan. Eh, it is what it was. The Fiend changes people. That's all that has to be said. Then we have a triple threat women's tag team match. I don't know if there were stakes involved with this. I kind of caught it a little bit late. I did work, so I caught some of the show. Um, but it was Sasha Banks and Bailey taking on Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss taking on Lacey Evans and Dana Brooke. I was shocked and wow. Nikki's so good. I miss Nikki Cross. Especially crazy Nikki. I need someone in this chair. Ladies. You listen up, Chris Stricklander. You could have been here, but you had prior commitments, though. Trust me, most of your commitments are probably more important than being on this guy's show. Anyway, that's a whole other issue. Uh, so this Nikki Cross is great. Crazy Nikki is the best. Um, when did Dana Brick get so good? Did all the reps on main event, does that like motivate you or something? I'll tell you what. Dana Brooke has always had the luck. Now that she went to a two-piece, the thing is, after I saw how tiny Riho is, she's tiny. And how skinny Britt Baker is. Dana Brooke looks. She's a woman. So I'll tell you what. You could see Britt Baker's abs. Not necessarily because she has developed abs, but there's nothing covering them. To me, listen, I know every guy has his own thing. I have my own things too. The two things that turn me off the most. If I can see ribs. And if I can see pelvic bone. If I see ribs or pelvic bone. Oh. I don't know what it is. It's cringe where they don't want to. How do you. bring uh, It's like a xylophone. Then like. I know you have the like the, on, on the back you have like, you have that kind of like the fine line where the spinal column is. I don't want to see each individual vertebrae. Ew. That's just not attractive. And with Dana Brooke, she's cute. And and Bailey, to her credit, has a little muffin top. Which is good. Shasta, Sasha's trunks are just too low. And Nikki Cross got pale. Did she not tan? Did she not put on the spray on tenor? Nikki Cross is also... Uh, oh, D Dana Brooke, Nikki Cross. Wow. You know what? I'll say Dana Brooke. 
because Nikki Cross is a married woman. And that would probably bode very well, very poorly for me. Bodes very well for Killian Dan. What am I talking about? Enough about that, though. Uh, then eventually, um, poor Dana Brooke, she got blind tagged by Sasha. And Bliss just, like, forgot to tan. And then fly, Nikki, fly! Oh, Nikki, crazy Nikki's the best one. She just decides to fly on everyone, but she ate the stuff, so... Oh, and then we have a double elbow with uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey were stuck in the corner. Dana did her um, handspring elbow again. Dana Brooke. Yeah. Show up to Daytona Beach one day. I'll show you around Daytona Beach. Yeah. What am I saying? You percent botch job on that. And then <laughs> Bailey looks like a Romulan villain. <laughs> um, again, the cheap shot to Lacey Evans. Lacey does get the hot tag. Broken Bliss make up the pin. I'll tell you what. Lacey Evans hit a woman's right on Sasha. Dana hit a senton. Lacey Evans and Dana Brooke won. I did not foresee that. You know what? I'm upgrading this match. And I'm going to have a nice little delicious sip of cola to celebrate that. This is a surf and turf match. Mm. He's already, this is better. Than the entire women's division in AEW. Wow, I just didn't see that happening. Then there was a Dolphin Mandy recap. Otis is upset. Otis is the dejected man. But guess what, Otis? You have a natural advantage that all men have. That's our rejection gene. I think all men have a rejection gene in them, which makes them kind of upset for like. Three days when a hot woman rejects rejects their advances, and then you just move on. Uh, then, of course, we have the New Day with 2020 and pancakes. Miz is not too happy about that. He's upset that the Fiend got into his house still. Knocks over the pancakes. And Elias says a little... Did Elias turn face drifter? I don't know. Seems to be that. Then it's a revival backstage, and they challenge Shorty G to a match, which leads to our next our next match. And that's Shorty G taking on, I guess Scott Dawson. I forget if it's, I forget if it's Dawson or Wilder. I get the two of them confused. They do not put their names on the trunks. I need to see their names in their trunks. For the most part, it was really a classic wrestling match. I'm um, eventually. Dash Wilder jumps in, or the other guy jumps in. Whoever's the bald guy was a commentary. And then um, when his partner was getting beat up, he jumped in, jumped Shorty G. Eh, it's a dusty finish. But this leads to me to train her Sheamus, because then Sheamus also beats up Shorty G. Whoa, did not see that happening either. Therefore, instead of being a can of soup, this is a ham sandwich of a match. And then we have Kofi Kingston taking on The Miz. And Miz just looks upset. Again, The Fiend has affected everyone he's wrestled. You take a look at Seth. We had Seth go absolutely bonkers. He's changed The Miz. Um, he's beaten up so many past stars. Fiend affects people. Not necessarily in a good way. So for, for the most part, this was starts off classic wrestling match, but now we have the heelish Miz. Ooh. Heel Miz is best Miz. Oh shoot, heel Miz. Oh yes, that's the Miz I want back. So 
good. I don't care because I never wrestled in bingo halls. I never put my body in the line for 50 people. You loser. Oh. I know that's not how it went, but it, 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 it's probably how it should have went. And Daniel O'Brien just storms off. Either just furious or laughing. Or making dinner reservations. Who knows? This was a good match. Kofi and The Miz. Again, heelish Miz is back. He did a through-the-rope uh, baseball slide. Again, Miz is expanding his repertoire a little bit, which is pretty good. Uh, Kofi eventually does hit the boom drop. And the Miz gets pinned by a roll-up, though. Miz is not too happy about that. He jumps Kofi. Is, uh, of course, Kofi's partner, Big E, comes in the ring. Miz says, ah, I'm not fighting two people. He goes back. There is... A quick little segment about with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Yeah, Miz wasn't quite with his being changed, but you know what? I'm Daniel Bryan. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and Otis is just upset because Otis Dozovich comes down to uh, take on Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak had his PowerPoint presentation, the 372 PowerPoint slide. Reasons why Mandy Rose won't date Otis. Oh, Drew Gulak. You just signed your own squash notice. Because this was a squash. It ended with a Otis hitting the fear bomb. You could tell because Tucker Knight was happy. Otis just came down to the ring. Guys, you know that look is like... I just have to... That dumb... Cunt rag of a bitch for a lesbian dyke. Oh, wait. Excuse my language. But yeah, it's like the day I found out my ex-girlfriend was selling the wrestling t-shirts I bought her on Facebook. I'm like, hey, that's that's the wrestling t-shirt I, I, got, I got my girlfriend. Wait a second. That is my ex-girlfriend. Cunt. Oh, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube. Who cares? Not monetized anyway. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> you can't take me for less than I'm making, which is zero. Zero minus zero e still equals zero. Uh, so this was a squash match. He won with the Vader bomb. It was fun. It was good to see Otis kind of uh, work out his frustrations. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And then there was a promo sometime in the back. Um, I'm getting my promos mixed up a little bit because I kind of wrote them in the margins. But there's a threesome with Dolph Ziggler, Mandy Rose, Tony Deville. The three of them are back there. Wow, I'm terrible. So much caffeine. And much more caffeine to come. And then, oh, John Morrison, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Impact. Yes, yes, yes. Are we going to see a revised Eminem connection? Oh, that would be awesome. Johnny Mundo or Johnny Morrison. That doesn't slide off the tongue. As long as Miz doesn't get his face busted open by a ladder, I'm all good with that. Then we had Braun Strowman taking on Cesaro. This was fun. Cesaro looks so much better in tights. Thank you, Cesaro. Because if not, you look like you had chicken legs. At least you can see the vascularity. Cesaro looks more like a pro wrestler in tights. I don't know. That's just me. I um, mean, he, does, he doesn't have the leg thickness or the body type to wear tights, like full length, like leggings. It just makes his legs look skinny, or at least there. Now you can see the muscles on him. Makes him, I don't know, look bigger for some reason. 
Uh, Cesaro, again, he looks better than Trunks. Braun is stronger. Cesaro could be stronger than Braun, though. Pound for pound. Uh, with Braun, it's kind of a very heavy hitting match. Again, heavy striking from both individuals. Um, Cesaro, he's smart. He goes after the knees of Braun Strowman. He uses a super hole trying to get the big man out. Um, Braun Strowman, eventually, uh, Cesaro winds up outside the ring. Of course, Braun Strowman wants to run around the ring. Tammy Zane is smart. Hides under the ring. A smart friend. Braun eventually catches Cesaro inside the ring. Monster slam on Cesaro. Braun Strowman wins. This was fun. Um, mainly because then Shinsuke Nakamura came in, Kinshasa Braun. And this was, I'll tell you what, this is a cheeseburger match. And Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan taking on Dolph Ziggler and hey, um, Baron Corbin. And then uh, Baron, for the most part, starts off early in the match. Yeah, he gets the early edge a little bit. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns misses a drive by, but it's not countered. Dolph kind of distracts Roman Reigns a little bit. This allows Baron Corbin to get back in the ring. Uh, Rain, for the most part, is by himself because theme music hits, and Daniel Bryan gets all freaked out by that. So Rain's by himself. He gets his licks in, though. But then he gets beat up a lot, too. Um, the double team work by Dolph and Braun, and um, I'm sorry, Baron Corbin is pretty good. Uh, Dolph Ziggler had him stretched out kind of almost in like a leg lock position. And Baron Corbin forced tagged in, and he just stomped on his exposed mid midsection. Good tag team wrestling. That's what I like to see. <laughs> and, oh, the quickness of Baron Corbin. Yeah, whatever. Uh, then there was the, of course, we get the American Dragon version of Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler. And we see this because Dolph Ziggler tries to roll up. Daniel Bryan for a quick pinfall, but uh, Daniel Bryan reversed that into a label lock. But we got to throw the death to finish, baby. And nobody wins. Because they pulled out the handcuffs. Where'd they get the handcuffs? What Memphis jail gave them some handcuffs to use? I want to know. Inquiring minds of the WWE want to know. Where did the handcuffs come from? And and who in Memphis is missing a pair of handcuffs? Handcuffs come out, and they just beat on Roman Reigns a lot. And that, it's a, that's the finish, baby. Nobody wins. And it's actually, I don't, I'll tell you what, it was a dusty old cheeseburger. But then the Usos, Ooh, so show up, save their cousin, and this pretty neat. On the Fiend shows up a second time. And it's a death to finish because the Fiend showed up and beat up poor Daniel Bryan, and then the Fiend disappeared. Where did that Fiend go to? That sneaky old Fiend. But the Usos showed up, super kick party, onto Dolph. They beat up Baron Corbin. They free their cousin Roman Reigns. Usos save the day, and that was SmackDown. I did that really quick because there's two other shows to get to. So let's take a little break. And now let's go to the short version again. I need more caffeine. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be a long night. But I actually caught some 205 action. That's when I came in. I kind of saw highlights for, for SmackDown. Saw SmackDown a little bit. And with 205 Live, I'd like to give two shout-outs. 
begin this show, SOW, you sir get a six count. And let's see here. Whoa, wait a second. Need that on. That's the help file. What did I do? Let's see here. Oh, shoot. I got to make that. I only have an hour to do that. Oh, that's not good. That's very not good. But call go 13. You, sir, are a winner by a dirty pen. So that because they responded to me, um, SOW said, "Oh, I said, oh, well, you never can be it." No, I was in a wrestling ring once. Did my moonsault broke my wrist? Said, "Not for me." Goggo thirteen, yes. One and a half hours away from Wrestle Kingdom, and I think there are at least forty thousand in the Tokyo Dome. I think. It's okay, something like that. So it starts off, uh, Danny Burch taking on Ari Davari. This is pretty good. Uh, it, was, it was nice to see Danny Burch. I never realized he was 205 pounds. I know Ari Davari was in the cruiserweight, kind of good back and forth. Danny Burch, the very proficient British style wrestler. Ari Davari, he likes to tease the crowd. He was teasing the Memphis crowd in the way that Jerry the King Lawler used to wrestle. And they were booing him. They're like, boo, don't you dare make fun of Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, Danny Birch eventually does get some locks on him. He had very traditional British joint manipulation, whereas Ari Javari is a little bit more underhanded. Again, more of the heel type person. Guess his strikes, his wrestling moves. 
Um, every time he'd go out to the top, Danny Burch would kind of just put his legs up and he'd always catch him. And however, there was re the return of this masked wrestler in a purple mask. And I'm like, that's not La Luchadora. Who's that? Is that. Do they like, have the purple wrestling mask? Is that like the generic wrestling mask for like any run in? Is that like the, the golden thong of the New York Yankees? <laughs> it's, it's just something that gets passed along. That's a terrible visual, folks. But, uh, so this, and they came in from the crowd. And you know it, it had to be a work because security didn't tackle him, period. If anyone from the crowd jumps on the ring, security beats you down pretty good. The rest will beat you down pretty good. I'm pretty sure Aiden English would beat you down pretty good. Tom Phillips would kick you in the nuts. Danny Burch, he'd mess you up. Ari Davari would laugh at you. So you knew when those five things did not happen, you knew it was it was a work. But uh, Danny Burch got distracted. Uh, it was enough for Ari Davari to hit his hammerlock lariat. Pin Danny Burch. And whoa! We have the return of one Brian Hendricks. Then he hits slice bread number two on poor Danny Burch. Uh, for the most part, this was a good match, though. 205 is pretty fun, though. I'll get to that later, but this was a cheeseburger match. And the Bollywood Boys take on Worms and Lane. I oh, don't know, two, two jobbers. One was in 205, by the way. Uh, the one chopper, he's short, he's pudgy. He looks like they just pulled out. <laughs> he looks like he pulled him out of a Memphis bar. Old school Memphis wrestling. Uh, for the most part, it's, it's a tag squash. Them chops are pretty good. Ed English and Tom Phillips are actually kind of fun to listen to. Uh, you definitely know who they like. They do have their favorite. Tom Phillips tends to be more of a heel. For the most part, in English is one of the face announcer, but they do they do have some play off each other, which is good to, to hear. Uh, and then, then oh, the jobbers do get some offense, and so it's not a total squatch. Yes, 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 yes. It's not a total squatch, which is just normally terrible. Uh, again, there's the chops, there's the super kicks. The Bollywood bow, bow or whatever they call it. And I'll tell you what. It was a fun match. For a squash match, it was a ham sandwich. And then I guess we have the main event. Tony Nee sticking on Angel Garza. So I can still roll my arms better than most Puerto Ricans can. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, Angel Garza was having fun with the front row people. That's good to see. I like it when the when the, when the wrestlers interact with people. It, 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 it personalizes stuff. Uh, then that's better. Is that the front? I mean... Tony Nice can talk. I like the fact that you can hear him without the mic. Pretty good. Uh, start off with the Greco Roman test of strength, obviously featuring favoring Tony Nice. Angel Garza does get his come out from that. Um, Garza. Again, he's funny, though. This was a botchy match, though. Again, new uses of the ropes. It's always good to see. It was botchy, though. There was the one botch. My niece, and it's like, ew, that did not look good. He like dropped a knee or slipped or something. Um, they botched some roll up attempts. They were way too close to the ropes. Then we got tied to the ropes. It just seemed that the timing was off a little bit. And after the second botch, the very disrespectful Memphis audience 
Shame on you, Memphis. Start to chant. This is awful. You can't. Well, you shouldn't say that. It wasn't awful. I've seen awful. Generally, when you have an awful wrestling match, people don't say anything. At least they they were invested enough in the wrestling match to watch. Granted, they voiced their opinion. Ugh. I've seen awful res wrestling matches. And normally the crowd goes silent. Because the two wrestlers will like stare at each other. They're like, what? And they'll stare at the ref and say, what? And the ref will stare back at them and say, do something. And then they're like, uh, hit me. Okay. Ugh. Now, 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 now you hit me. No, I did that. Oh, okay. Ugh. And the crowd's like, yay. Well, yay to her. Boo. Boo. Wait, wait, no, we already did that. Y yay. Yay. Boo. Yay. Y y what? Why'd she just kick her? Oh, whatever. That's how a bad wrestling match goes. This wasn't necessarily bad. It's just botchy. There's a difference. They're honestly trying. Um, then there was, again, Angel Garza tried to tear the pants off. Tony East wasn't having any of that. The pants stayed on for a little bit. Um, the pants eventually did come off. Woo! Uh, Northern Lights Virgin Suplex into a Boston Crab. That's amazing. Angel Garza did hit the wing clipper on Tony East, which actually looks pretty impressive. And Angel Garza retains his 208 belt. I'll tell you what. The only reason I'm saying it's a ham sandwich It's not because of the crowd. It's just because of the Boshes. Wow. That was quick. That was 205 Live, folks. It's a rare one of the rare chances you guys to see that. So let's take our second break. And I'm back. Now it's time to talk about the third show, NWA, the Power Hour. And I need some power because I'm all out of caffeine. And I have to get this video set up and then take like a half hour and a half and make a match card. And then eventually I have to do that too. Shoot. I'm doing that tomorrow again. That's okay. What video gets postponed? Can't be yawning. Only twelve forty-five, and I have to be up until seven a.m. Seven more hours of wakey wakey time. But enough about that. Uh, NWA starts off. Tim Storm. Tim Storm comes out because the promo. Nick Aldis. Yeah, he comes out. Does that with Camille, and he wants to be known as Nikki Two Belt. He's like, I, I want to enter this television championship for fun. Uh, then it's Sal Ricario taking on Aaron Stevens. Third degree in Mongrovian Karate. And I'll tell you what, I do like the fact that the announcers mentioned Jiu-Jitsu. Stu Baird is such a heel, though. Uh, again, uh, sh Shooter Stevens, they, he, he called him Bruce, the equivalent of Bruce Lee. Okay, Stu... Relax. Uh, again, it was kind of karate stance. He did do the judo arm, which is pretty cool. Sal <laughs> was, was mocking with a crane style from the from a uh, karate kid. That was funny to see. Uh, Sal was going for the figure four, but eventually got caught in the Mongrovian clutch. The Katahajine, also known as the Temmission. And that was good. This was actually really fun. 
I like the fact that NWA does so much with so little. This is a cheeseburger match. And Trevor Murdoch comes out. Whoa. And he flusters him. You can't talk. And, and he gives him fighting words. And wow. This leads off to our next match. And then we have Suitman Crothers and Danny and Danny Deals. Danny Deals. Danny Deals. Wait a second. They they look like like Holiday Harry in the land of F and Holidays and Barry Bratwurst and Barry Bratwurst used cars. Shout out there to, to Friendo Unified Championship Wrestling from Stephen Larson. There's your cheap shout out, guys. Thank you. And you're welcome. Uh, so then it was Aaron Stevens taking on Trevor Murdoch. This felt like an NWA Styles match. Trevor Murdoch is NWA through and through. He looks like some guy they pull out of a bar. And if you know old school NWA, they just used to pull people out of BR bars to fight. Uh, then there was a side rush and leg sweep. Again, it was a strike heavy by Stevens. Makes sense. It's karate. Or it's not strike heavy. It's karate. Mongrovian style. Um, then he tried to go to the standing Mongrovian clutch. But instead, Trevor Murdoch locked in the Indian deathlock. I haven't seen that since the days of Chief J. Strongbow and Wahoo McDaniels. I know a couple of others have tried it. Trevor Murdoch. Whoa! Just for trying and attempting the Indian Deathlock. This is a surf and turf match. Then there's uh, the Pope, Eddie Kingston, and Homicide. Uh, Eli Drake comes out because the promo. Colt Beck, Colt Command comes out. And then Kenny Anderson does. They all kind of. Colt says, Colt holds back Kenny Anderson. They don't want to have a fight. Then it was a women's match. Marty Bell taking on Tasha Steele. And I'll tell you what, this is a much better match than any women's match in AEW. A very traditional wrestling match. Decent rope running by both. I mean, the fact that they can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and they can do some pretty complex spots. That's pretty good. Even though Melina is giving directions. You could hear the spots. It's not as bad and it's such a studio work. Sometimes it's hard not to hear this. But, but with two two inexperienced women and you can hear a few spots it's not that bad I mean it's not the dumpster fire that is AEW's women's division I mean I think I got excited over it because it was live but when you take a look on TV it's like Riho won Riho's waist is the size of Nyla Rose's leg one leg. Britt Baker's skinny. She's not cut. She's just skinny. Like, she has a muscular definition, but that's because nothing else is there. She has bones. Uh, she is the most womanly looking woman. And that's not because I can see hip bone and panty. And they're blue. And she looks like a woman. She has boobies. And Chris, I don't care. Alien woman has, she has a little tummy. It, she looks like a woman. Rio looks like a schoolgirl. Britt Baker is way too skinny. Nyla Rose was actually a man. Yeah, she is the woman. She just should win. <laughs> by, by virtue of three of those. She has the, oh, she has the fourth grade here of being a normal woman. But that's neither here nor there, though. Chris Jotlander should win. Um, the bunny 
could also be in contention. Definitely awesome Kong. Awesome Kong it has to hold the AEW women's belt. Awesome Kong. Thank you so much for your selfie. Awesome Kong. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And I just broke my camera again. So there's going to be some funky delay. I'll work on that during the editing process. Uh, again, very traditional wrestling ranch. Um, Lena giving corrections. I'll tell you what. Uh, Marty Bell missed the hip attack. Uh, Tasha Seal. Double X handle blows. Oh. Oh. Classic wrestling from the NWA. I love it. She had a European uppercut, which looked legit, too. And she won with a cutter. Tasha Steele wins. Lena yells at Marty Bell. This is a cheeseburger match. Lena's legit pissed and rips Marty Bell. Good for her. And then we have uh, Tim Storm taking on not Nick Aldis. He's like, I wanted to do this for fun. This ain't fun no more. I see Roy Sizer's going there. Roy Sizer's like, me? What? I have my hot girlfriend behind me. Oh, well. Guess he wrestled. Um, Aldis wants... <sighs> he looks like at some parts Aldis just wants to laugh. Uh, Storm, again, very classic wrestling. Very pissed off Tim Storm. He wanted Nick Ald Aldis... Again, there was a uh, Nick Aldis comes out in literally like dress pants, a jacket, shirt. It's like change, 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 change. Uh, what else? Again, it was pretty good. You could hear a little bit of the direction giving, especially by by Nick Aldis, which is bad. Um, I like the fact that Nick Aldis said these are the most PG chants I've ever heard because they're just like coward. Like pfft, that's the most peachy thing I've ever heard of you. <laughs> I'm used to being called every dirty language under the tongue, and you, you losers are calling me cowards. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, again, Storm gets into crazy strikes. It's the perfect storm. Tim Storm wins. A good match. I can't complain. It's a cheeseburger match. And then the Rock and Roll Express just show up behind Nick Aldis. They snuck up behind him, just kind of shadowed him a little bit. And that was NWA Wrestling! And I go thank everyone for watching. Oh, and by the way, folks, probably by the time this video goes up, you'll be seeing part of the Hobo Studios because I'll be putting this... It'll probably be processing sometime through Wrestle Kingdom, and this video will be posted during Wrestle Kingdom. So again, check me out live streaming Wrestle Kingdom, or at least doing my R R and R show. I can show about nine seconds per match, so a little bit in every match will get a little stuff. You will be able to hear it because I'll take these off and put on the main speaker. So again, thank you everyone for watching. Um, stay, stay tuned, or be tuned, or check out my live stream for Wrestle Kingdom. Bye.